Tapman, welcome to the channel. Today I want to quickly run through my thoughts on the Whipper. I was a relatively early backer to their crowdfunding campaign, so I think I'm one of the first people to receive the Whipper who is actually a paying customer. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to see some follow-up videos. I bought the package that includes the rower, skier, stand-up paddleboard, and swimming setup. So that means you get two base units. The, the first package arrived with all, all the parts needed for the rower, skier, and stand-up paddleboard setup, and then I received a separate package that had the other base unit in it. That that's needed for the swim accessory. I haven't actually received the swim accessory yet, so we'll see what that when that comes in. Comment below if you want to see other reviews on the other components. Um, but today I'm just covering the rower. To give a little background on me, I have a good amount of experience using Concept2 rowers. I was in the Army Infantry for almost nine years, and I was trained on the Ranger Athlete Warrior Program, the Army Tactical Athlete Program, and the uh, CrossFit Training the Trainer Program. So I have a good idea of how to do fitness programming, and I used to run the fitness program for my squad. I'm no longer in the shape that I was back then, but I still try to stay fit. I bought the Whipper so I could have the flexibility to travel and save space when it's not in use. So I want to start with the build quality. I gotta say this is extremely well built. I've only had it for a short period of time, so I can't really speak to the long-term durability of it, but I do think it will last a long time. I know that Whipper had called out some wear items in their videos, but I haven't actually dug into which parts those are. I would mostly be concerned around the cable as there is a nylon uh, wrapper around this cable. There's probably a stronger internal core. It feels like some kind of, you know, strong, durable inner core. But the nylon part on the outside, I could imagine this will wear over time. And the fraying, you know, you wouldn't want the fraying to end up inside of the Whipper base unit. So that's really my only concern from a, a wear perspective. Uh, you know, you can check Whipper, you can check Whipper's website or maybe when they put out information on their actual wear items to know more. On the rower, all of the hand tightened knobs seem to thread really well. The, the base where the seat attaches, so this part right here, it's uh, actually two pieces. The, the seam right here, it's perfectly aligned. So as you can see, I'm rolling back and forth right now. And you might hear a little bit of a clicking, but you can barely feel it. And when you're actually, when you're actually using this, you're not really going to be noticing it at all. So the tolerances in, in the manufacturing for this rower base part, I think were really done, well done. Drop a comment below if there are any particular components you want to know about for build quality. The next thing I want to cover is the actual rowing resistance. I saw a whipper video that claimed that as you get to seven on the whipper resistance, it's about equivalent to the Concept 2's seven resistance. I think I got to disagree with that. Maybe the initial resistance is on par, or I'm not sure exactly where the divergence is. I feel like there's a bigger drop off in resistance after the initial pull. Personally, I would say the whipper resistance setting of 10 is probably the equivalent of Concept 2 resistance setting of seven or eight. This doesn't detract from your ability to get a good workout in, but I'm not sure that I could do a hard burnout types of sprints because the resistance is not as strong. I popped a screenshot of a 20 minute Apple Fitness workout that's an interval training type workout, and so you can get an idea of the level of work that I was doing. I tend to work out with no shoes or minimalist types of shoes like Furushikis. I did this workout with no shoes on and my feet feel pretty good in the straps. Another little complaint I have is when I hit full extension, there can be a little bit of a bounce to the whole rower. This could be due to me being six feet tall and I often do hit a deep full extension position to do a little bit more core engagement. It's not a major issue and it could just be flaws in my own technique. Overall, I'm really excited to have the Whipper. I will definitely be spending a lot more time using it. While it may not be perfect, I think they did a great job making the best possible portable rower. Drop comments below if you have anything else you want me to go over. If there's a lot of questions th that come up, I will try to cover them in a follow-up video. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you can catch that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure Tappin's happening on that like button. It really helps with the almighty algorithm. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.